So it's basically schooling children, you know, to sort of look at cinema in a very creative way. So it's kind of thinking about the future generation of filmmakers and film audiences as well. And it's also uh, giving money to distributors, to the promotion of Polish cinema. So it's a very complex, you know, overall strategy, which has proved to be working very well. Would you say it was easier to make films now than when you first made Walkover in 1965? It is e e easier and it's much more fair, you know, because um, we are not the subject of any political uh, pressures, you know. At the era of the communism, we were trying to maneuver in between the lines of censorship. Now there is a complete freedom, obviously, and the fairness of decisions taken by by the Polish Film Institute lies on the fact that it's the the committees the, are comprised committee. of the filmmakers themselves, filmmakers, screenwriters, writers, editors, professionals, distributors, professionals, colleagues, not the politicians, colleagues. not the social uh, worker. No, it's just the industry itself. So it's really very well organized. And collaborations are, are also encouraged. I mean, you are, it's a Polish-Irish production. Right. So, and you film some of the internal shots in Dublin? Right. Yes. yes. Right. Yeah. So, um, can I ask um, think something about the film now? Please. The themes of the film. Um, there is this, you, you film it from every possible camera that is available today. So every sort of image there is today from uh, the tablet to yeah. the original drawings. So, and the final shot is something like, um, something that I would interpret, is, is, is surveillance now the all-knowing divinity that knows everything? Is that... Obviously, this is one of the messages of this film. But I treat this film like a poem, you know. I'm using metaphors and I don't want to put them into exact words. You know, poem is a poem, so everyone could, could read it, its metaphors and symbols its, its own way. But uh, yes, you're right, this is one of the, one of the subjects of the, of the film. But you do have a clear image of a man in a suit, in a computer. Well, that's just, this is how our life looks like now, and uh, either we feel uh, comfortable with it or we don't. I don't, but there are people who enjoy all those Facebooks and things, you know, this is their way of executing life. And why 11 minutes? Why? Why 11 minutes? When I started this project, I only had an idea for the finale. I practically had a vision, you know, what could happen. But I didn't know who are the pro protagonists, who are the people. I only had this, and I thought this would be wonderful end for some film. So in order to, to make the film, I had to work backwards and create the, 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 the palette of the characters, establish where they are in the different parts of town, and get them together at that very same time to that very place. Uh, so I thought, okay, I will have probably eight or nine little stories told within that short time before the the finale. So I thought having eight or nine stories, each of them, if it takes around 10 minutes, it will be just 90 minutes film plus finale, that's perfect size. So I knew that it, the number has to be close to 10. 10 as a number is too rounded and has also the, the, the connotations of 10 commandments or, you know, 12 the same, you know, 12 apostles. And, 12 months, very Catholic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 12 months, you know, 13 is the, you know, it will be too significant. So 11 was the choice, especially that aesthetically speaking, this is the nicest number. One, one, 11. And the hotel room and the floor. 
What's your relationship with working in England? Sorry, since, what? Since Deep End, you have made a lot of films in England. Is that something that you enjoy? But sorry, what is the question? That since your relationship with the UK. With UK. Yeah, yeah, no. I lived here in, for many, many years. Uh, and uh, I enjoyed being being here in England. I cut, I managed to cut the best years. Uh, I enjoyed being the part of the King Street crowd, you know, wearing long hair, long hippies hair. You know. In the sixties. Yeah, in the sixties, and then later on, yeah, I made those British films. I. Some of them were uh, they were voted the best British films of the year, like Moonlighting in, got the Evening Standard Award in 1982. Uh, you know, Prince Charles was shaking my hand, uh, Queen was shaking my hand. I felt fine, you know, it was a good, good time. Then I had to leave London, I went to Hollywood. And uh, now I'm back from time to time. I always en enjoy coming to, 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 to London. It's a, it's a part of my life. Because you have so many What's stories. this? Green cheese with can I? Uh, sorry. My question was, you have so many different stories. There's no one lead actor or actress. How easy is it to ask actors to be involved when they're not going to be the star of the film? Which is what, they, it, what, how do you get actors involved when yes. they are not going to be the lead main star? I'm honest with them, you know. I said I have uh, eight stories uh, and 15 characters, and you would be one of the 15. So, and they all gladly uh, 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 accept. They don't. Well, there was a little bit of a fight. Who's number? Who is on the top of the of the of the cast? You know, but everyone was reasonable and understood each other's needs and. We had a very, very good cast, you know. This is, those are the top Polish actors. We have Richard Dormer, one of the best Irish actors, excellent in the part he's, he's, he's playing. I'm very happy with, 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 with him. He, he has done his own stance, can you imagine? Well, it looks different, you know, when you see the guy going down and you see that this is him, not the stuntman who is just covering his face and for a glimpse you cut shortly to have a face of the actor. No, it's him falling and falling and falling and we can look at him, he reacts. Yeah. You work a lot with Jeremy Thomas, tell us about that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need nothing. Sorry. Yes, we work on the shout. In 1978. It's Jeremy's second film, yes? That was Jeremy's second. He approached me, being very young. Mm. I was already well established yeah, so um, he proposed the idea I immediately accepted we worked very smoothly uh, we shot the film I think in like 20, 20 22 days on locations in Devon it was the smoothest ever work on the film I had Jeremy is a really wonderful pro 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 producer. He understands the film like no one else. He is... I feel offended, actually. I just felt like a stinger. Well, you're, you're just next to you. You're just next to you. But, but, you know, uh, comparing to, to the other people I've worked with, Jeremy is, uh, is, is, is really great. You know, he... 
is a filmmaker himself. He directed the film, so he knows the job inside out. And um, that's always a pleasure to work with him. Would you be interested in going back to Hollywood, director? Or do you think that now... To, back, to go back where? To Hollywood. Mm. Hollywood is not for me. Mm. Although we already had a question about the remake of 11 Minutes from Hollywood. <laughs> How's the film been received in Poland? Hasn't been received yet because the, the opening night we have on the 20, 21st of October. 23rd of October. It was just uh, a couple of screenings. The public, you know, got it very well. There's a few German, Polish journalists who went to Venice and reviewed the film, so, so these were very good reviews. Excellent. But then the film was screened in Gdynia and there was a, a couple of very bad ones as well. So I, I think it's a very divisive film. You know? There is no in-between, there is no lukewarm reviews. It's either absolute love or like really passionate hate. Why should it be passionate hate? Uh, people, uh, there's one journalist uh, which is like working on the internet who said that it's just a, like a big bubble this film, that it's about nothing, it doesn't mean anything and it's not new and that the films like that were done before like Magnolia, like uh, uh, Altman and this, there's nothing new about it. Which, um, yeah. I'm very surprised. But that was the only one. Yeah. Yeah, but Otherwise, you only remember the bad reviews, though, don't you? <laughs> oh yes, I have them pasted up on my, you know, desktop in my computer. <laughs> but technically and narratively speaking, it's brilliant. It's fresh and modern. Yeah, that's... yeah, and I think it works on a very different level than those films because those films were trying to build a narrative stories, and this one, you know, the tension is not within the stories themselves, but kind of underneath in the texture of the. Of the filmmaking, which is which, which is never, never 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 which was never present in those films. So, yeah. You said you worked backwards. You had the ending first. Yeah. So when you worked backwards, um, did, did it flow easily for you? Did the stories come easily as to how you got to that ending? Well, I can say it was easy or difficult you know I knew that I had to do this job in order to have finale so it is very unusual way of working obviously but I don't know if it was helping or not helping or make it more difficult that in a way it already organized my work I knew okay so many people those places now I have to use my imagination how to get them so when I have a career on a, on a, on a bike it's easy because of course he would go to one client second client then arrive here okay done then the hot dog seller okay he should be working in the neighborhood and in a certain moment for certain reason he has to move his chart here done the wife who comes for the for the audition and the husband who follows done more problem was with the painter with the little boy you know how to get them but using imagination and knowing you know where am i the frame is then fulfilling the frame simply I've heard somewhere the word describing it as fatalistic. Would you agree with that? That it was? Fatalistic. Oh, fatalism. Would you agree with that? In a way, yes. Yeah, well, 